The students are told a million times that this does not work in general, but maybe there are some numbers where this actually works. If so, we would have that a squared plus b squared equals a plus b squared, and if you expand that, then you can see that you could cancel the a squared and the b squared, and you get that 2ab is equal to zero, which means that a is zero or b is zero. So yes, there are examples where it works, but they're just boring, like the square root of nine plus zero is equal to three plus zero. Boring. There is an actual geometric reason why this doesn't work, and it comes from Pythagoras' theorem, because if you have a right triangle with side lengths a and b, then the hypotenuse has length the square root of a squared plus b squared, and that distance will be the same as the long distance if you travel through the sides, if and only if one of those two sides is equal to zero. So then what about near misses for this equation? What about if the square root of a squared plus b squared was equal to a plus b minus one? Or more generally, what about if the square root of a squared plus b squared is equal to a plus b minus epsilon, where epsilon is some very small quantity? Is that possible? If so, then a squared plus b squared would be equal to a plus b minus epsilon squared, and if you expand that square, then you get another expression in a, b, and epsilon. If we cancel the a square and the b square on both sides, then I get this other expression in terms of a, b, and epsilon. And this is linear in b, so I can actually solve for b in terms of epsilon and a. And the solution is that it always works for any epsilon bigger than zero. I can take b to be epsilon plus epsilon squared divided by 2a minus 2 epsilon. So, for example, if epsilon is 1, if I want the square root of a squared plus b squared to be equal to a plus b minus 1, then just I just have to pick um, b to be 1 plus 1 over 2a minus 2. So, for example, when a is equal to 3, I can pick b to be 5 fourths, and it works. Or, for example, if I want epsilon to be very small, to be just 1 over 10, and a is 3, then b is going to be 59 divided by 580. And again, it works that their sum of the squares, the square root of their sum of squares, is equal to their sum minus a very small quantity, 1 over 10.